Okay. Hello, everybody. So I'm here to talk about diversity and the achievement gap. So improving teaching through understanding, through understanding our students and through understanding the context of what students may be going through, what what effects does diversity have and how can we understand that so that we can improve our practice. Okay, so going on to here is uh, diversity is a fundamental principle in life. We need diversity to help us as to help us lead a healthier, happier and balanced life. Therefore, it is a necessity. And some people think that this concept of diversity just is just means about racial eth ethnic backgrounds. Now, so to expand on this is diversity is necessary in the sense that we need diversity to function in general, just as a concept in, in, in its applications in life. Meaning if we want a balanced life, for instance, we want to stay fit. You know, we need to very diversify our, our activities. We need to diversify what type of exercises we do. If we want to stay healthy in terms of our diet, we need to um, also consider, you know, eating a diversity of different healthy foods. And so diversity, essentially just the whole concept is really what helps us function, you know, in all aspects of life. But we just kind of stuck to one thing or into one way. Um, we wouldn't allow we wouldn't allow us to be balanced and so that's kind of the idea of diversity in general and so if we can accept that concept as something as ne that's necessary then we can really start understanding why we need to kind of expand our um, understanding of our students and and their backgrounds not just in terms of ethnicity but in terms of their community in terms of their gender in terms of their socioeconomic status and so uh, the diversity that exists just in, in so many different uh, ways and variables and factors. So let's start with why. Why do we need to understand this? Well, as it states here, there's a great deal of scholarship that shows education must be meaningful and empowering for students to learn effectively. So we want our classroom to mean something to them. And so the only way we can really understand if what we're teaching is meaningful is if we can understand the diversity of our students. If we just kind of approach it in just a singular way, um, then it does nothing but a disservice to the students that are just inevitably going to have come from a diverse background. Um, the diversity of our students and respecting that. Uh, we want students to become critical, think, to become critical, critical thinking and active participants in our democracy who challenge social equities. So we want them at some point to, I mean, the whole point of us to, to, is to educate students is that, so that they can contribute to society and, and become critical thinkers and be able to um, function independent from us. We want them to be independent from us. And so um, part of that is that we, if that's what ultimately what we're striving for, then we have to know, and that's where I go into this bullet point right here, is that we are all equal and worthy people. So there's, we shouldn't have a bias on who should succeed or not. If we're talking about equity, equity should be something that is a human right to everybody. And so that's why understanding diversity is so important. And so going into the main dilemma of this all is if we can agree that we need to have equity in the classroom, then we got to realize that um, that the education achievement gap exists. It's a real thing. And so this refers to the differences between students of color and their white peers in various subject areas. So like moving on from there, is that the data does show African and Hispanic students are on average performing two grades lower than white Americans in math and reading. And if we really believe in equity, as I'm saying, as a value in education, then that means we should 
strive for that students in all racial groups should show about the same levels of achievement. Meaning ultimately, if we want to be providing an equi equitable education and, and us as educators are striving for everyone to succeed, as, in, as I mentioned earlier, then we need to make sure that these uh, gaps in achievement are addressed. And so that's where we also got to understand diversity and understand that this is, uh, there, is, uh, there is a problem. And on the contrary, too, it's also getting rid of our biases as a teacher. So, for instance, one bias that is stated here is the, the model minority stereotype. And this goes for Asian American and Pacific Islander students. It is a stereotype belief that Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders do not need help because they are all high achievers. And what this really does is it creates a false assumption in the groups of students and it creates disparities amongst Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, meaning when we generically put um, group all Asian Americans into one category, then it puts all the high achievers and uh, it brings up the lower achieving Asian American and Pacific Islander students. And we're talking about a big, big diverse group of different cultures and people. So to just kind of group them into one category and which ultimately on average is going to make them higher achieving statistically it means that we're missing those students that are in those groups that are actually lower achieving if we make the assumption that they are going to be they are going to be fine then it does nothing but a disservice to them because then it's going it is going to leave a lot of students behind so we can't the ultimate thing is we can't make assumptions we can't make assumptions of our students So addressing the gap. And so what, what, are, what are ways to go about this? Um, one thing that, uh, that has been stated is that exceptional programs that succeed in closing the gap have clear goals, develop strong academic policies, include parents in learning, uh, in the learning process, providing many opportunities for students to excel and employ teachers who hold extremely high expectations for both students and themselves. And so ultimately, I think what this comes down to is understanding diversity so that we don't create these biases, so that we don't go in with this linear way of approaching teaching and just kind of go off perhaps the standards of the white middle class, which is um, ultimately, I think, just the standard that America bases itself off of. It's, it's uh, just historically built up to that. And so, um, employing teachers who understand that dynamic and also who hold the students accountable and hold themselves accountable to do their, to fulfill the duty that it is possible to close these gaps. Because when, we, when we're creating assumptions and when we're creating biases, that's when we can just let these trends take over and it could be a, um, a reinforcement of, of these stereotypes. But as it's stated, these are all just stereotypes and this is, uh, these are the steps and approaches in which we can start addressing our teaching so that we can, we can, we can start closing these gaps and help start helping everyone succeed. So important attributes to consider are, is the school and the culture that we build, it needs to be student-centered, relationship-centered, and culture-centered. So meaning the students in our classes need to know uh, that what they are learning has relevance in their lives, meaning that we're we're making that extra step to build relationships with students, to understand who they are as people, and respecting the the diversity in their backgrounds, respecting their culture, respecting their community, respecting their family values and traditions, and also putting the student first. And ultimately, I think if we center ourselves around that, that ultimately is what allows us to address diversity in all the most appropriate ways, but also it gets us to, um, to not make the assumptions and, and actually close the gap and allow students to succeed. So ultimately, teachers need to know that social oppression is, a, is real and continues to up, obstruct equity in society. 
and um, the, the regardless, irrespective of of what school it may be, you know, the life for our learners can be chaotic and complex. And I don't think even in terms of demographics, it, it can be from affluent school or less affluent school. You know, students come with their own lives and facing their own challenges and problems. And so I think uh, irrespective of, of where we teach, we always have to be conscientious about that. And then uh, students, uh, you know, need acceptance and belonging. And so I think it goes back to this previous slide that if we can create student-centered uh, curriculum that builds relationships and respects their culture and addresses culture and shows the our curriculum can show practicality into their lives, then we're really reaching out to them. And we're just not only, uh, we're not just simply teaching, uh, you know, assessments to, we're not teaching students to just fill in bubbles. We're teaching them uh, something meaningful that allows them to learn and be successful in their lives. Thank you.